Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, the opening of joint virtual internship is about to start. Kindly to set your audio on mode of mute and open your camera with the conference virtual background. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning from Jakarta. His Excellency, Rector of University Muhammadiyah, Professor Dr. Hamka, Professor Dr. Gunawan Surya Putra, Vice Rector of Student Affairs Hamka, Ibu Dr. Leli Kodariah, MPD, Dr. LCM Pako, Vice President for Academic Affairs, GMMMCU. Jam. Jam. <laughs> Executive Jam. Mbak, kok di ini, kok di Nabila, ini. your is on me. Oh, yeah. oh sorry, ma'am. I don't, okay. Yeah. Please repeat. Executive Director of Lembaga Pers Dr. Sutomo, LPDS Dr. Sutomo Pers Institute, Bapak Hendra Yana SHMH. Dear all mentors from LPDS who will be sharing with our students, the Dean and of Faculty of Social and Political Science, Uhamka Ibu Telis Korniana, Vice Dean of Visip Uhamka Ibu Nurli Narahman and Bapak Rifma Gulam Zaljat, Mr. Jesus Rafael Jarata from Office of Internationalization, Link Ages and ET. ETEEAP, DMMCU. Program Koordinator Communication Program of UHAMKA, Farida Haryarti. Head of International Office UHAMKA, Head of Learning and Education Development Center of UHAMKA. And lastly, distinguished guests, faculty members, and all students for UHAMKA and DMMCU. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Praise be to Allah, the God, the God, the most, the most gracious, and the most merciful. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great honor for us, Octavia Inujana and Nabila, as your MC, to be here. And I would like to thank you for joining this virtual event or join virtual internship on media convergency in the in the digital communication era. Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, before we start our agenda, let us say Bismillahirrahmanirrahim or praying together for this program. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ladies and gentlemen, a continuing the next agenda is report by the head of Department of Communication Uhamka Ibu Farida Haryati, the time is yours. Yes, thank you, Okta and Nabila, as the MCs today. And Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Selamat pagi, magadang umaga, for ladies and gentlemen and all the participants. His Excellency Rector of UHAMKA, Professor Dr. Gunawan Suryo Putro and Vice Rector of Student Affairs, Ibu Dr. Leli Kodaria, Vice President for Academic Affairs of Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Dr. LCM Paku, and then Executive Director of Lembaga Pers Dr. Sutomo, LPDS, Bapak Hendrayana SHMH, all instructors or mentors from LPDS who will be sharing with our students, the Dean of Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, UHAMKA, Ibu Telis Korliana, Vice Deans of FISIP, UHAMKA, Ibu Nurlina Rahman, and Bapak Rifma Gulam Zaljat, and also Mr. Jesus Rafael Jarata from Office of Internationalization, Leakage, and ETEEAP, DMMSU. Head of International Office, UHAMKA, Bapak Dr. Purnama Syaifur Rahman, Head of Learning and Education Development Center of UHAMKA, distinguished guests, faculty members, and all students from UHAMKA and DIMSU. 
Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Praise be to Allah, the God, the most gracious, the most merciful. Very good morning, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of Department of Communication, Faculty of Social and Political Sciences, Universitas Muhammadiyah, Profesor Dr. Hamka, we are so grateful to have today's uh, next two weeks agenda, join virtual internship on media convergence in the digital communication era. This, uh, this program is under CTVET membership and it will be our first international collaboration between my department communication and don mariano marcos state uh, memorial state university and the students who will be participating in this program is third, are 30 students consists of 11 students from uhamka and 19 students from dimsu and this event will be running for two weeks from today, 18 to 29 of July, 2022. And we have uh, six instructors or mentors, uh, five instructors from Lembaga Pes Dr. Sutomo. Uh, and I would like to say thank you very much, Bapak Hendrayana as Executive Director of LPDS for this partnership and fully support our program by providing professional instructor and also uh, an instructor from DIMSU. And we do hope that this program will be running well and we may be developing our partnership for further activities, research or maybe join webinar. And for all students from DMMSU, I would like to welcome you all to Uhamka virtually. Enjoy your time to have learning with us and just feel free to inform us if you have something to discuss. May one day we could visit each other. And thank you. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh and good morning. Thank you, Nabila and Ocha. Okay, thank you, Ma'am Farida. Ladies and gentlemen, now we would like to invite Dr. Purnama Sayyaf Rahman as the head of International Office of WAMCA to deliver a speech. To Mr. Purnama, this time is yours. Thank you, Nabila. Uh, good morning, all the participants and the... Uh, uh, and the speaker, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Assalamualaikum. Alhamdulillah, we start our program, the City Pet Internship Program, with our partner, uh, LPDS, Lembaga Pers, Dr. Stomo. I hope this will be uh, the model for other study program to make such this program because uh, we can not uh, make a progress now if we don't have the partner from the professionals. And I say many, many thanks to Dr. to Pak Hendrayana from LPDS to join our program. Uh, it is a great honor to us to have you and your team uh, to have uh, our program in this internship, international internship. And I said many, many thanks also to communication program from Timsu, Mr. Jarata and Ms. Uh, Parida and all the team for the hard work for this program. I hope uh, we can make a benefit from this program. And this is the pioneers, I guess. Uh, so, uh, Maybe there is some mistakes, some fault in the program, but uh, you are the best. You are the first one, and I think uh, communication from Dimsu Philippines and Philipp uh, communication program from Hamka uh, will make uh, the leader from virtual intensive. Uh, I hope uh, this program will be beneficial and success. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, sir, for the speech. 
The next speech, we would like to invite Executive Director of LPDS, our partner in this program, and today will be delivered by Bapak Ahmad Jauhar. He is the Chair of Yayasan Pendidikan Multimedia Adinegoro, LPDS. Bapak Ahmad Jauhar, the time is yours. Thank you very much uh, for me to deliver this uh, speech. First of all, uh, I'd like to deliver in our beloved language, Bahasa Indonesia. I hope uh, all the people here uh, to excited to hear how beauty is Bahasa Indonesia. All right. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi dan salam sehat untuk semuanya. Para akademisi di UHAMK Indonesia maupun di DMMSU Filipin yang terhormat, kolega saya di LPDS, para mentor atau pembimbing, dan seluruh peserta yang berbahagia. Atas nama Yayasan Multimedia Adinegoro atau LPDS, saya ingin menyampaikan beberapa patah kata pada acara pembukaan ini. Ini merupakan sebuah kebahagiaan bagi kami di The Adinegoro Multimedia Foundation atau The Dr. Sutomo Press Institution or, or abbreviated as LPDS untuk dapat berpartisipasi dalam kegiatan Joint Virtual Internship dengan tema Media Convergence in the Digital Communication Era ini. LPDS selama ini menjadi lembaga yang mengkhususkan diri untuk mendidik dan meningkatkan kemampuan para jurnalis di Indonesia. Lembaga yang juga menjadi perintis penguji kompetensi wartawan di Indonesia ini telah banyak bekerjasama dengan berbagai perguruan tinggi maupun institusi media di dalam maupun luar negeri. LPDS juga telah lama menjalin kerjasama dengan Prodi Ilmu Komunikasi Visip UHAMKA yang pada kesempatan ini di, melakukan kemitraan dengan Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University, Filipina. Tujuan kerjasama antar institusi ini adalah untuk memperluas jaringan dan pengalaman mahasiswa dalam pembelajaran serta sebagai upaya merespons program Merdeka Belajar Kampus Merdeka. Prodi Ilmu Komunikasi Visi UHAMKA berpartisipasi mengikuti the first batch of virtual Simeo TVET Student Exchange 2022 yang dikoordinasikan melalui Southeast Asia Technical and Vocational Education and Training RCTVET di bawah organisasi Southeast Asia Ministry of Education Organization yang yakni organisasi Kementerian Pendidikan se-Asia Tenggara besar harapan kami program kerjasama ini menghasilkan output yang berkualitas bagi mahasiswa kedua negara pada khususnya maupun ASEAN pada umumnya akhir kata salam sehat bagi kita semua dan selamat berbahagia serta bergembira selalu good morning and healthy greeting to all. Distinguished academician at UHAMKA Indonesia and at DMMSU the Philippines. My dear colleagues at LPDS, the mentors and all of the participants. On behalf of the Adinegoro Multimedia Foundation or LPDS, I'd like to deliver some words regarding the opening this program. It is a pleasure for us at the Adinegoro Multimedia Foundation or the Dr. Sutomo Press Institute to be able to participate in the joint virtual internship activity with the theme Media Convergence in the Digital Communication Era. LPDS has been an institution that specializes in educating and improving the capability capabilities of journalists in Indonesia. This institution, which, are, which is also the pioneer in testing the competence of journalists in Indonesia, has collaborated with the various 
universities, and media institutions at home and abroad. LPDS has also long collaborated with communication studies study program VSIP UHAMKA, which is on this occasion has a partner with Don Mariano Marcos Memorial. The purpose of this inter-institutional collaboration is to expand the network and student experience in lear learning as well as an effort to respond the, to the Merdeka, Merdeka Learning Campus Merdeka. This is a program by Ministry of Education Indonesia. The Communication Studies Study Program of FISIP UHAMKA participated in the first batch of virtual CML event student exchange 2022, which coordinated through the Southeast Asia Technical and Vocational Education and Training, or CTVET, under the CMO, CMO our Southeast Asia Ministry of Education organization, which is the organization of the Ministry of Education throughout Southeast Asia. We hope that this cooperation program will produce quality output for students from both countries in particular and ASEAN, ASEAN in general. Finally, have a healthy to all of us and be happy forever. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. Waalaikumsalam. Thank Good morning. Thank you very much, Bapak Ahmad Jauhar. And for the next speech, we would like to invite Dr. Elsie Mispako, Vice President for Academic uh, Academic Affairs uh, DMMCU, to deliver a speech. To Dr. Elsie M. Pako, the time is yours. Good morning to our partners from Indonesia. Uh, Maligayang bate mula po sa Pilipinas. It is my honor and privilege to have been given the opportunity to be with you virtually for this international collaborative effort involving the Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University and the Universitas Muhammadiyah Professor Dr. Hamka in Indonesia. The occasion today is yet again an example of how DIMSU is enhancing its international reputation and visibility through the strong trust of a global internationalization and linkaging strategy framework. And by expanding engagements and partnerships leading to the exceptional global opportunities opportunities for cross-border mobility, cultural collaboration, and information sharing. And I believe that developing institutional linkages, such as our virtual student exchanges, can enrich everybody involved. So thank you, Ohamka, for choosing to partner with us in this academic endeavor. At present, DIMSU is relentlessly exploring more partnership opportunities in the spirit of international understanding and goodwill with our Asian neighbors and in other countries which are open for mutual academic cooperation. And I thank you for believing in our world-class capabilities for instruction. Our Filipino students will also have the opportunity to learn Indonesian media culture with you. Our students will surely enjoy the program with OHAMKA. I wish you fruitful deliberations during the course of the series of trainings and lectures and other activities. Magandang umaga, OHAMKA and DIMSU mabuhay. Okay, thank you so much, ma'am, for the speech. And now, ladies and gentlemen, and for officially opening this program, we would like to invite Ibu Dr. Leli Kodaria, Vice, Vice Rector for Student Affairs of, U of UHAMKA, to deliver a welcome speech and open this program. To Ibu Dr. Leli, the time is yours. Thank you, Nabila. 
Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning for all. Alhamdulillah, alhamdulillahirabbil alamin. Assalatu wassalamu ala asrofil anbiya wal mursalin wa ala alihi washabi ajmain. Asyhadu an la ilaha illallah wa asyhadu anna Muhammadar Rasulullah. Uh, thank you. The Honorable Rector of University Muhammadiyah Profesor Dr. Hamka, uh, the apologies for rector who can cannot attend this event this morning because he has another event in West Sumatra. Uh, I'm sorry. Uh, and the Honorable Mr. Hendrian Hendrayana SHMH, Executive Director of Lembaga Pers Dr. Sutomo. Uh, to Mr. I'm sorry. I hope Bapak Ahmad Jauhar, Ketua Yayasan Pendidikan Multimedia Adi Negoro yang menaungi LPDS. Terima kasih sudah bekerja sama dengan kami. The Honorable of Leader Don Mariana Marcos Memorial State University DMM MSU Mr Mrs Elsie uh, thank you and all participants for you attend the virtual from room this, mo uh, this morning thank you for all attendant uh, in this event it pleasure and honorable to get this collaboration in virtual internship with partner from Lembaga Persutomo and Don Mariana Mariano Marcos Memorial State University. We hope this internship can improve our student ability in communication skill and the theories that have been obtained by student in the university can be practiced in the real place. The student will get theory and practice about media convergence in the digital communication era. On behalf of Rector, we open the program by reciting Bismillah. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. How people, this program can go well and we can continue our collaboration in the next project. For student Don Mariano Memorial State University and all, I hope you come to Indonesia. Please explore Indonesia, this museum, library, traditional culinary, and so on. I think Mr. Farida, Mrs. Farida, Ibu Farida Hayati will guide tour for you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Uh, good morning. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yes. Ocha or Nabila, please. You may continue to the next. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you, Ibu Dr. Reli Kodaria, for delivering the speech and officially opening the joint virtual internship between UHAMKA and the MMCU today. But uh, before we continue the, the event, uh, we would like to present to you the video of um, our cultural video. And it's uh, about uh, Nanak Chondet Dance or Nandak Ganjen Dance is a dance originating from Betawi. Betawi is one of the ethnic group in Indonesia. Uh, this Nandak Ganjen dance is a new creation dan dance that has existed since 2000. This dance was created by Betawi artist Sukirman or uh, Bang Anton and Atiem Kisam. Nand Nandak Ganjen has a meaning, namely Nandak, which means uh, dancing, and Ganjen, which means filtry. Not just an ordinary dance, uh, the Nandak Ganjin dance turns out to have a philosophy, namely, namely the dance that depicts uh, women who are growing up, uh, or the term teenager, where, where, where usually teenage girls behave cheerfully, filtry, or lively. 
This dance is performed by the Uhamka Dance Community named Charika, whose members are Fisip Uhamka students. So we would like to play the video, please. <laughs>
Excellency, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests and participants, thank you for joining the opening program today. And we are continuing the next agenda, Stadium General Journalism, and today overview journalism and public relation by speaker Bapak Ahmad Johar, mentor of LPDS, the chair of Yayasan Pendidikan Multimedia LPDS, and the moderator Ibu Titin Setiawati, SIPMICOM. For Ibu Titin Setiawati, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much, Octavia. Am I audible? Yes, ma'am. Okay, thank you. So, uh, good morning and Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh, ladies and gentlemen. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah, welcome to the second session of the opening of Joint Virtual International Internship Program 2022. Uh, this program is uh, this program is uh, in collaboration between Communication Department of Social and Political Sciences Faculty of Uhamka Indonesia in collaboration of uh, Dr. Sutomo. Uh, Press Institute Indonesia and Don Mariano Marcos Memorial State University Philippines. Uh, my name is Titin Siawati and I'm going to be the moderator for today. Um, so it's been almost 20 years since we use uh, a cell phone in our daily life. And I believe that the technology is something that will bring a new way, a new norm, and a new value to the society. One of the remarkable changes in society is that the communication technology makes the convergence real. And when it comes, maybe many of us have to cope with it since we are not completely ready for it. And as people who live with communication technology that never stops improving, uh, we have to realize that communication technology also comes with every possibility. And Uhamka, as one of the national universities in Indonesia, wants uh, to give a positive contribution to that through this joint international virtual program. And now we have a speaker who is already with us. We have Mr. Ahmad Jauhar, one of the Indonesian senior journalists who started his career at Business Indonesia Daily uh, and editor-in-chief of Business Indonesia from 2002 to 2009. Uh, and char Chairman of Harian Serikat Penerbit Surat Kabar from 2015 to 2019, Editor-in-Chief of Harian Jogja or Jogja Daily from 2009 to 2018, and Vice Chairman of Indonesian Press Council from 2016 to 2019, and the Chairman of Yayasan Pendidikan Adi Negoro or, uh, Ad uh, or Dr. Sutomo Press Institute. And now, Mr. Ahmad Jauhar is the chairman of OJK for Financial Services Authority in Indonesia. And I'd like to greet Mr. Jauhar first. Hello, Mr. Jauhar. Good morning. Assalamualaikum, Mbak Titin. Waalaikumsalam. Are you okay? Waalaikumsalam. Alhamdulillah. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. Okay. Greeting from Jogja. I'm in Jogja. I live oh, in, you're Jogja in Jogja right now. Since this uh, Idul Adha, uh -huh. I move, we move to Jogja, to Sleman. Exactly. Uh, uh, we, we live in, here in Sleman. Mm -hmm. uh, we live uh, when uh, when you live in Jakarta uh, a day and night only twenty four hours, right? Yes. Yeah. In Jogja, <laughs> we live for twenty five uh, hours. hours. <laughs> exactly. Or day and night. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it's a very beautiful city. Yeah. So Sleman, Yogyakarta is a very peaceful and beautiful city. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Welcome to this virtual internship program, Mr. Ahmad Jauhar. Thank and you. yeah, this program will last until 11.45 and Mr. Ahmad Jauhar will deliver the material uh, after uh, the after Mr. Ahmad Jauhar deliver the material and we will discuss for about 45 minutes. And Mr. Ahmad Jawahar will deliver about journalism today, the overview of journalism and public relation in a uh, digital era. And uh, for your information, uh, our audiences are university and faculty members 
lecturers and students of Uhamka Indonesia and Dimsu from Philippines. So it's quite very. And uh, all the audience uh, can ask to Mr. Ahmad Johar using the right hand feature, or you can write down your question in the chat box and I will read it for you. Please uh, feel free to ask to Mr. Ahmad Johar after Mr. Ahmad Johar delivering the material. And now uh, I'm going to invite Mr. Ahmad Johar. You have 45 minutes uh, to present your ideas, your work, your paper. So please, time is yours. Thank you, Mbak Titin. Thank you. Just call me Johar, not okay. without Mr. <laughs> okay. Uh, I'd like to uh, present the Journalism Today overview. I think the role of journalism and public relations, it is a kind of two sides of a coin. Uh, journalism and public relations always uh, move uh, side by side, right? Now, and if we know, just moment. Ah, let me make it bigger, the screen. Uh, the evolution of communications have uh, moved so far. Uh, we know that it, it starts from probably from the cave paintings and stone carvings 30,000 before Christ. Yeah has a long, long, long history. Then uh, people then uh, exchange the message through the carrier pigeons, or probably 776 before Christ. Then marathon is a part of the how human delivering uh, message each other that's uh, marked by a marathon man. It's uh, probably about 530 years before Christ. Then we move. The modern era comes to us to the civilization. Uh, the first newspaper appear in the Dutch and uh, Germany in. 1640 then marconi make a telegraph in 1840 then Greg alexander graham bell invent the telephone in 1876 then develop and develop then also comes to our uh, world television in 1927. The internet, what we live uh, with today, is uh, first appear in 1969. Yeah. And then after that, it developed more and more, and we are now living in what so called is living in social media uh, world. Okay, uh, we know that uh, there is a blogging and a Twitter, etc., etc. We, we, uh, we can say that now, nowadays we cannot live in without Facebook, without uh, WhatsApp, without as texting and other thing. That's part of uh, e the evolution of communications. Now we are about the evolution of journalism. Journalism itself begins in ancient Rome about 130 before Christ. Then uh, Johann Gutenberg print in, in fact, the printing press, and from that start, uh, from that uh, year, in about 15, uh, 1415, 
uh, the technology for technology for the printing is spreading all over the world. Yeah, it's it revolutionized how people to read the book. Before that, the book is only produced uh, by writing uh, one by one at all, all of the, the books. Yeah, cannot produce uh, massively like uh, when 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 there is a, a, a printing press. Uh, we cannot call it as machine because it is only mechanical apparatus apparatus that print one by one. Yeah, one by one. When it's very very primitive technology of printing. Then comes to us radios and television form broadcast system. It's about 1920s and 1920, uh, 1950s. After that, nine, 1990s and until present, online newspapers becomes more important than printed journalism. We can say that. Because uh, now uh, people cannot live without uh, without a gadget, without online, etc., etc. Yeah, about history of journalism itself. Journalism. Uh, what I have said that uh, it starts from words of mouth. Word of, of mouth mod, it start when the sailor uh, go abroad, they sailing away from home. Then when they return to home, they tell uh, people, they tell people that never go abroad and they tell everything what happened in the world. That start of the uh, journalism. Uh, manually, yeah, manually. Then, uh, along with the development of uh, printing technology, invented by Johann Gutenberg, uh, then appear the written uh, and print uh, written media and print media. That the start. It says uh, start about uh, the 16th century. Then in 20th century, the the development move further to to be radio and TV. Eh? Yeah, radio and TV. In Indonesia, television starts from uh, the, the television technology owned by people start from 19. 65 I'm not, if I'm not mistaken yeah For the first as Asian games that's the start over of the television system in this country I don't know in the Philippines probably more uh, more advanced than that probably um, are uh, probably the uh, same in, in Indonesia too then in 21st century marked by uh, the presence of digital media yeah uh, that's the history of journalism journalism is always in line with the technology so uh, we cannot say that journalism is ahead of technology no it, always in line with technology Now, the evolution of media, see, from the evolution of the machine, from the start, what, as what I said, uh, marked by smoke signals, then, yeah, this is Gutenberg press, is like this, yeah, the, you can, you cannot mention it as a machine, because it's a very, very traditionally, very mechanical, yeah. Uh, then uh, 
there is a technology print uh, kind of uh, replication technology that called as a lithography lithography that is offset uh, kind of offset then uh, people invent the in 19 in the early of uh, 18th century eh, 20th 20th century yet it is rotary printing press it is continuous printing then after that uh, can be uh, printing uh, pr pr printing newspaper and printing the the book easily so people around the world enjoy how to read the book how to read uh, made printed materials that's a very essential in reshaping the human culture everywhere everywhere in the world the uh, the history continues that the machine can produce uh, offset printing in the massive number then journalism also developing and that from that time until the the peak is about in 2008 the uh, the the victory of printing technology yeah a lot of uh, media printed media printed media is is the king at the time 2008 uh, then appear on our um, our culture that the dark ages, ages of old media media lost its grip and money yeah because uh, the the appearance of Google Facebook Twitter Instagram Pinterest and so on YouTube and people love all this uh, media new media and soon forget the old media the printed media radio and television are called as uh, old media yeah uh, there are a lot of new inventors and a new uh, a person that occupy the media world yeah who don't know uh, Zuckerberg inventor of Facebook yeah and also a uh, series of people that all them of them like uh, triggered to invent the technology related to the internet uh, this is what I said uh, before that journalism and industrial revolution it's all always comes like comes uh, all together yeah when industry point uh, 1.0 it's related to mechanization, steam power, weaving loom. It is about. Uh, it was started over by uh, James Watt when he invented the uh, the first machine uh, generated by the steam steam machine. It's about 1784. Then move to uh almost uh one century next uh, next century is mass production assembly line and electrical energy that's called industry 2.0 2.0 marked with the uh everything that can be uh, produced uh, massively and uh, and easily with the uh, m machining facility then almost uh, one century next one century is coming with the industry 3.0 it's marked by automation computers and 
electronics yeah he starts over from 1969 everything's change in industry automations make uh, people uh, easy to do anything yeah to produce something is uh, easier than than before yeah then uh, today today called as industry 4.0 it's marked with the cyber physical systems internet of things networking and other things related to this so uh, for easy speaking uh, the industry 1.0 is marked with the print media then uh, print media still uh, in still needed in industry 2.0 then in this until industry 3.0 until now industry 4.0 print but uh, print is uh, seems like a decreasing yeah because people around the around the globe seems like not interested in to read the ma ma uh, a newspaper magazine that printed and other uh, reasons is this technology uh, pr printing media printed media is not environment friendly because it needs a lot of uh, resources natural resources like how to produce uh, the paper the news uh, for for the newsprint is very very expensive it needs uh, a lot of um, woods to be cut it and a lot of uh, water to produce the uh, paper for the newsprint paper and about journalism in digital age we are now moving to digital journalism also refer refer to as online journalism is a contemporary type of journalism where editorial content is circulated through the internet instead of distributing distributing utilizing print or communication yeah so we are now uh, every single day every day of in my in our life is uh, sub, sub, uh, supplied with a lot of information informations uh, some people call it as a tsunami of information yeah that's right because right now uh, the media institution a lot of media institution producing information more than we need it more than people expect it uh, that's the uh, uh, not an non-important uh, stories printed non stories uh, right uh, written by uh, everyone in the world especially in social media Uh, I'd like to uh, tell uh, the stories back in the pa in the past when I want to interview a source personnel I had to first make an appointment and funds by making a telephone call through respective telecommunication facilities yeah on the day day I came to the informants place with a tape recorder that had to be charged with batteries and cassettes or oh, there are also those who bring block notes and ballpoint pens to read about the what he uh, he tell the re re reporters like me and at, the, at those days to take pictures 
someone must bring a camera, yeah, camera that has been filled with rolls of film or cellulite that cannot be misplaced because if you misplace the film to the camera, it will be burned out, yeah, the 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 image only a black image. I have experienced that many uh, more than uh, more than once. But after that, I've never experienced uh, the mistake like that anymore. Uh, it is a very different usage uh, with the digital devices. Yeah. At those days also, typing a script of news using a typewriter is a memorable experience. Yeah, if you make a mistake in in typing the stories or in news of uh, articles, you should be using a tip X or correction pen. Yeah, everything is everything feels sluggish. Yeah, not as easier as right now yeah the electronic eggs the electronic egg comes there are electric typewriters followed by the presence of computers and finally smartphones those develop de do, those devices help journalists a lot it is very very uh, the situation and the uh, the work is uh, very very different with with those days. Oh. Sorry. The present uh, journalists in this this these days. The presence of the internet makes everything feel even faster. Journalists can work more quickly and efficiently. Even the digital era is described as the golden era of journalism. Most of the data about everything and anyone, anyone is easily accessible on the internet. In the digital era, journalists can make more innovative investigative reports. Data can be obtained from big data, and it is possible to make reports collaboratively. Uh, one can say that no people who are uh, who are not uh, who, who don't have uh, media can create the media by himself or herself. Yeah, this is uh, what Alvin Toffler said in in nineties year nineties that we are now become a prosumer, producer, uh, as well as consumer of information. Yeah, by having the blog and everything like uh, similar to that, you can produce. Uh, stories and published it uh, instantly thanks to the internet on the other hand on the other hand the digital era also brings its own challenges to journalists the existence of social media allows everyone to become a journalist even they don't actually they don't have experience to become journalists before yeah because it allows people to take advantage of user-generated content. Uh, uh, now, how is the uh, relation with um, public PR or public relations world? How the journalism and public relations influence each other media relations in is historically a core activity qualifying public relations from other communication related profession and is 
widely practiced in many organizations. Despite the increasing use of digital media to directly communicate with the public, journalists are still key stakeholders for organizations. Also, communication by organizations have become more and more mediatized and at the same time, more and more journalists are switching to a public relation career. Uh, in Indonesia, a lot of uh, mid or senior uh, journalists who have experience as a journalist many years then become a public relations officer in, and they join with the uh, PR companies. They are not not become a journalist anymore because they feel that to be journalists uh, is cannot uh, get the enough money to support the, their daily living. Yeah. Yet, it more journalists are becoming public relations practitioners, and more public relations practitioners are adopting journalistic working practices. Does this change the way these communicators perceive themselves and the other profession? A research results, a research results indicate that public relations and journalism's covering converging roles is affecting how these communicators perceive each other in a favorable manner. Furthermore, the impact of is the impact is more evident in public relations practitioners since their opinion of journalism and journalists corresponding to journalists' self-evaluation. Evalu I'd like to uh, give you the, uh, a glance, a picture of uh, me media landscape in Indonesia. Right now, uh, a lot of media is yeah, collapsing, especially <coughs> when they hit by the uh, what's so called the internet, internet media comes so uh, uh, widely, uh, they create everything online, media social as well. Now, then as, uh, furthermore, when uh, there are pandemic like uh, COVID-19, uh, media in, in many countries uh, get paralyzed. Yeah? They are uh, suffering because uh, not much uh, the advertisers who place the advertisement in the media. You know, because the uh, advertisement is the so-called blood of a media. Media without uh, advertisement is cannot uh, support their daily living. Yeah. Print media was a giant compared with online media with Lilliput scale. Yeah. I think the these illustrations probably uh, match with the situation. Uh, Gulliver in the Lilliput land, they uh, wanted by the Lilliputs but cannot strong enough. The media, media, media traditional media especially, it's like a, a sleeping giant right now. And in 2000, uh, in 2018, there are a lot of 2,000 titles of print media, but it, it, it is decreasing with time. Yeah. In uh, 2018, also there are a lot. There are uh, at, at least 674 radio stations, about. 
523 TV stations and more than 40,000 online media and it is increasing with time. Everyone still trying to make uh, online media because it's very cheap to create online media if you cannot uh, using uh, apps like uh, like uh, blog kind of blog or something like that even uh, you can use YouTube to make our, your own media yeah that's what happened uh, in everywhere in the world now the challenge of digital transformation digital digital gains don't make up for print losses yeah cannot uh, cover the losses for uh, print media for every one dollar gain in digital it means that seven dollar are lost in print revenue you can imagine that the deficit is about six dollar for media this research uh, run by pew research uh, center's project for excellence in journalism uh, so uh, people in in the world sometimes uh, playing the world the word at avalanche at the balance means the uh, the decreasing of advertisement drastically the, this is a situation in the United United States net digital advertising revenue in a million billion dollar yeah while Google and Facebook enjoying uh, enjoying the advertisement but other companies including the print and traditional media is suffering because their uh, revenue from uh, advertisement getting decrease decrease and decrease the future ecosystem for digital media it's it's kind of like a monopoly uh, game you know the who 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 enjoy the game uh, google and facebook this the main player who enjoy the situation and in china in china because they have their own system they can't uh, they can bar or they can uh, minimize the penetration of Google as well as the uh, Facebook. So China still enjoy the internet booming while other countries cannot because other countries like uh, expect uh, expanded by uh, those international uh, the, those international platforms that's why us the usa uh, not so 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 suffering because usa has antitrust uh, antitrust antitrust uh, law so people cannot uh, uh, cannot control from uh, of, of, uh, every every single line of the business yeah that's the in the USA, USA. Europe then uh, force the uh, the like a Google and Facebook with the digital uh, DSA and DMA digital laws that uh, prohibit them to uh, to penetrate furthermore that will make uh, local media suffering more yeah uh, what about the the other uh, the rest of the world 
do they have a digital sovereignty that's right now uh, in, the, in Indonesia they're still formulated to make a, a law of anti, a kind of antitrust then uh, to protect the local media so they can be uh, as uh, as a media, as sovereign with the uh, the, the the commerce like uh, Google and and Facebook, that's very difficult. But we have to try. We have to try because you know the market, the local market is big enough. So we cannot uh, become uh, only. Uh, only as the viewer, we have to be a player too to enjoy the uh, media booming at this uh, at this time. I think I have finished my presentation, and probably there's a uh, questions uh, and answer. Uh, but I'd like, uh, as uh, moderator said, that. It's preferable if you can ask uh, the question uh, written to this this forum. Thank you very much. I think uh, that's uh, my presentation, but it in. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. It was very interesting presentation, uh, and it was interesting when you said that print media was a giant and the online media was a little put into thousand. And now, uh, print media is decreasing, <laughs> and online media is increasing gradually every day. Uh, it was so clear to us about the overview of the journalism today, but uh, I'm pretty sure that uh, some uh, attendants here want to ask you some questions. Yeah, so uh, please, uh, I'm inviting you uh, to all the attendants to uh, ask to Mr. or Pa Ahmad Jauhar. You can uh, raise your hand. Uh, using the raise hand feature or you can write down your question to the chat box. Okay, please, who want to be the first questioner? Please. Oh, this. Nabila. Okay, Nabila, you want to ask to Pak Jauhar, Pak Ahmad Jauhar, please, Nabila. Yes, thank you, Miss. Uh, first of all, Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam. The, the Honorable uh, Miss, Mr. and Mrs. Lecturer and all of friends uh, in this internship. I am Nabila, and it's such a honor for me to asking a question. I want asking about uh, artificial intelligence or AI, AI has grown worldwide and is applied in different sector to quicken production process. And journalism has benefit for AI as robots engage in journalistic processes and produce results quickly in broadcast and print media types. And I want to ask about, uh, is there any change if artificial intelligence can reduce human resource and roles in journalism sectors? Thank you, Mr. Okay. Okay, Pak Ahmad. So, any uh, other question that's yeah. similar to the question? Yeah. Yeah, is there any question again? So it uh, looks that Nabila uh, a little bit worried about her future <laughs> in journalism. Yeah. So so you can explain about uh, the future of artificial intelligence yeah. uh, in journalism. Uh, okay. At the future. Okay, so uh, is there still anyone who wants to ask to Pak Ahmad Jauhar? Maybe from the team suit? If there is no question, I will uh, answer Nabila. Yeah, the AI is a, a kind of the development of technology that also a threat to journalism itself. Because uh, with its uh, ability to gather the information that they reformulated the stories according to the machine 
AI is uh, generated by machine, yeah, a robot, especially robot and uh, artificial intelligence. Uh, they, but they cannot uh, sense like human. It is very different, very different style. When human uh, tell uh, everything, probably they can't make uh, a poetic uh, sentences or art, art uh, semi-art uh, sentences. But a robot can do that, can do that, yeah. What I mean is uh, the human-made uh, article sometimes feels like a uh, uh, lit, lit, uh, literary works, Karya Sastra, yeah. It is very, much, much different with the uh, what what bot or AI machine can do that uh, uh, can do that. Now, nowadays, a lot of uh, online media has. Uh, oh, sorry, there are a lot of motor out there. Uh, there are some even in Indonesia they have uh, using the robotic system to produce the stories uh, that's only gather uh, the robot is uh, can read a thousand pages from all of the, the internet then they summarize to be a, a story but the story is very shallow what I can say it's the 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 touch no no human touch for that and that's uh, for me it's very uh, I'm never interested in reading the story that cre created by the bot or the artificial intelligence machines it's very very different the sen the the sense is very different. Yeah. Uh, so if uh, when the pe people still uh, consuming for, uh, by word by word, but they need uh, the art in this content, they still need the people to write down the stories. Uh, not will not interested in uh, reading the stories uh, right down by uh, the artificial intelligence. That's what can uh, what uh, I can say, but it didn't. Okay, thank you, Pak Jauhar. Uh, so uh, we don't need to worry about <laughs> the artificial yeah. intelligence since uh, machine do not have sense. Right, so uh, we still, uh, the uh, journalism uh, still need us as a communication and journalism uh, student. So, uh, is there still any question? Uh, or I'm inviting uh, all this. Who is it? Raisin? Let me see. Who is it? Agnes. Okay, Agnes. Okay, Agnes, you want to ask to Pak Jauhar, so please. Assalamualaikum, sir. Yes. I'm Agnes. Yes. I want to ask you a question about stuff about future journalists. Can you predict how the newspaper survive in the digital area? Thanks. Okay, so the prediction of the newspaper and printed media in the digital era, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. Yeah, this is also interesting question. Uh, what uh, what were, what can I say is uh, actually in a uh, deep in my heart the newspaper will uh, survive uh, by the time yeah because uh, when uh, in the United States for example uh, 
the specific newspaper like Washington Post, New York Times, or in in the UK like Guardians, Financial Times, in or in Japan, there are a lot of uh, newspapers that can survive in these circumstances when uh, or if they are able to uh, persuade the uh, technology like they make a choice to the readers not only producing in uh, printed technology in pr printed material yeah but also in the format digital digital format that's a very important especially to uh, serve the the youngster because the youth now demanding the digital product they are not uh, not patient enough to waiting for the coming of the newspaper like used to be yeah uh, and also uh, the important things is the uh, the the in-depth content for the newspaper itself when the newspaper uh, not write the stories uh, in depthly so the reader will not read anymore now people need the in-depth story yeah uh, the first appearance of internet is marked with the very short news very short stories but uh, some uh, some news site uh, change the, the that habit that habit that uh, they read write down stories in depthly and people still eager to read it uh, all, 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 all of the stories whole whole story it means that people actually need the information completely not only uh, piece by piece yeah that's that's the the key uh, how to make the newspaper can be survive uh, by the time yeah I think that's probably can not answer you Agnes <laughs> so Agnes uh, this is uh, this is uh, from Pak Jauhar so uh, basically a printed media and digital media has a different style yeah Pak Ahmad Jauhar yes, so, uh, yeah. so uh, when we talk about the printed media we talk about the in-depth story but when we talk about the digital media, we talk about the short story. And now uh, we don't need to worry about uh, the future of the printed media. So because uh, every media has their own future. OK, so uh, is there any questions? Please, is there any question? Uh, not only the students, but uh, the lecturers here also can ask to pass. Ahmad Jauhar, don't worry, Pak Ahmad Jauhar uh, will give you the answer. So please. Or maybe from uh, Dimsu, Philippines. Our friend from Dimsu, Philippines, you have any questions? Our uh, the friend from Dimsu probably can share the stories about how the local uh, media how the news local newspaper still survive nowadays probably if they want to share <laughs> oh, this is the question from uh, one student uh, he write them to me and uh, he asked about how about the future of uh, journalism is it still advantageous for the communication students since almost everybody could be a communicator today so uh, maybe he uh, see uh, some youtuber or some media creators that uh, they are not studying communication but they could be a communicator a good communicator so how about 
the future of communication student Pak Ahmad Jauhar. Yeah, it is uh, also a good question and it's very very uh, up 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 to date a topic for us who are involved in the communication uh, education and communication practices uh, well the future of communications i think we are not uh, we are we cannot uh, keep the distance with the uh, uh, electronic or with the internet everything will be internet based including the communication system yeah uh, you you name it and because right now the uh, the trading system or the e-commerce everything is need communication without uh, such as a communication platform that is suitable for uh, the system you cannot sell anything uh, even in the e-commerce area so uh, shortly speaking that uh, communication uh, field is always uh, will always be uh, demanded by community by the people yeah so i think the future of communication is very good you know uh, in i I'm lectures in one of the university in Jakarta in communication they are now creating the uh, sub sub study of how to communicate how to communicate uh, with patient this the designate designated for the hospital for the hospitals because a lot of hospitals cannot make communic a good communication with patient with m people uh, the, the most of doctors in Indonesia uh, they just communicating with the patients it's only what do you what do you com what what I, what I, what are you complaining uh, you have you complained something or you you feel not bad with blah 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 uh, then uh, with a short communication with the patients then the doctors just give the uh, prescribe uh, or or, or uh, to buy medicine in a particular then that's enough no discussion for no further discussion that's very bad communications now this hospital need need the uh, practitioners uh, communication practitioners how to improve because it, it's kind of hospitality hospitality means communication it means that it need a lot of communication practitioners so whatever uh, the te technology technology will be or the what whatever uh, the circumstances will be i think the communication practitioners is still needed by our community not only uh, we don't need the kind of robotic uh, people that has that only answer yes or no or something but they if they have ability to communicate uh, with others so they can explain why we have policy like this like that and you, what should you uh, do with kind of treatment treat and treatment it's including with the uh, in commercial area in commercial if you 
make a good product, you have to be able to explain technically. So make people, make uh, buyers uh, interested in to buy the product from you. Gitu mungkin Mbak Titin. Oke, okay, thank you Pak Ahmad Jauhar. So uh, this is about uh, yeah. So uh, we could go to the next question, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. Yes. Yeah. Somebody write to me. Is it true that some people said that digital information system is more fragile than the printed one, since when a little error occurred, it will cause a big damage for the information? So is it true, Pak Ahmad Jauhar? <laughs> Uh, what can I say? Okay. Uh, before the internet, uh, the era of internet is coming. Uh, the journalism relatively fragile with the, the problem with the problem of uh, ma many problem in communicating with the, with the people sometime uh, it related to journalism right uh, sometime uh, the journalists do not understand what uh, they have to deliver to the people properly uh, because uh, it, I, I have experienced it with the uh, especially for, with the young young journalists or our young uh, public relations officer, they, they cannot deliver properly what, sh what they have to, to, uh, to deliver the message uh, to, the, to others. And that, this, that will be uh, fragile, yeah, for, for, fragile for, uh, for its profession profession of journalist and profession of public relation. Nah, that's why in uh, journalism in Indonesia, there are the program that uh, boost the ability of journalists to uh, move further uh, understanding how to write down the stories properly and accordingly to the uh, law, press law, and uh, code of conduct, that that uh, that a must, that a, an obligation. So they they are not. Uh, what I hear is in the PR uh, PR world, uh, PR community. They also make such a uh, competency like that. Uh, public relations people can understand, can uh, understand the basic of their profession, so they are not trapped to the uh, to, to the uh, fragility like what you mentioned about i think that's uh, about it in yeah uh, that's my answer for this question uh, so if any time if we don't uh, have the competency in this field in this area so we will if we work in the uh, as well as uh, in in the world of journalism as well as in public relations, it will be uh, uh, dangerous for for people who involved in because we have to deliver the message to the people, and uh, that's very very uh, careful to uh, to be to be careful in this area. Okay, thank you, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. And we have one question more from uh, Aira. So this is from uh, Dimsu, our friend from Dimsu. 
I will uh, read for you. Considering the language barriers among the different nations and countries, how can we still be effective? So this is about the language uh, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. So uh, Aira asked uh, to Pak Ahmad about the differences of language and uh, nations. Yeah, yeah. Okay, thank you from Aira uh, M. Parocha from Dimsu. Uh, yeah, language varies uh, from day to day is more uh, more uh, easier to eradicate because there are a lot of uh, a lot of uh, devices that are enable people to uh, to apa, to overcome this this problem yeah to overcome the the, the barriers I mean so from communicators from uh, from communication uh, spectacle it is no more uh, worry worry worriness it's more uh, I think like like this probably a few years ago when it is not uh, not possible to to run such program like this uh, to make uh, online meeting like this but now with the of, of course with the limited uh, language of us especially for Indonesian a lot of Indonesian are not include me include including me not uh, as fluent as you in the Philippines uh, but we will uh, narrow the the gap between uh, each others to uh, to facilitate with other things like yeah, probably we can use the uh, what 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 I have what I have to say we can we can use a, a written format like this so we will easier uh, uh, understandable understand e easier than than it, than before I think there are a lot of devices so especially uh, if we in South East Asia it's still easier for us to communicating each others because for Indonesian and the Philippines uh, there are a lot of uh, words that uh, we have uh, we understand each others like like I understand because uh, without open the the book what Pangulo ng Filipi Pilipinas means that's uh, the president of Philippines limang pulu peso, peso. that's uh, 50 pesos all right now uh, that's the is uh, right now it we, we are using app in our handphone it's compared to the uh, other nation part of Asia nation like in China in Korea they feel difficulties to uh, to speak each others because because of what uh, their literal language is written in the format that we don't uh, familiar with yeah see uh, who can who can read uh, Chinese characters uh, a lot in here I'm I'm not sure that a lot of people here can read the Chinese character yeah or Korean character or Japanese character but when you find the uh, Indonesian language you can read it easily but probably not understand what it means 
then you can just open the translator here in this uh, gadget always there is easier for us uh, so that's uh, one of the uh, the way how to to narrow the the uh, the gap i think okay that's uh, what, what do you think? My yeah answer. We still have some questions, Pa Ahmad Jauhar. Uh, is it okay for me to read the questions? Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so this is from Sinta Riswanti. Uh, new media is the most popular for spreading a news or topic in a nation or around the world. So, uh, see us uh, to Pa Jauhar. So, what could influence a journalism except technology? Okay. Influenced with uh, the, especially with the character of the journalist itself. Yeah. Yep. The journalist itself, some somehow, has to has uh, have to be a uh, a person that had have uh, that ha uh, have to have a good manner and good attitude, good knowledge, and good understanding in everything. Because if they don't not, don't understand the good manner or the good understanding uh, about everything, how can they deliver the uh, the perfect thing to the reader, to communicating to the people? That's very important. That's why uh, in uh, uh, competence. Uh, test for journalists in Indonesia, those things is a very, very emphasized to make uh, the journalists has has their best performance. Yeah, because if journalists don't understand the uh, political issue or something, they cannot defend the people. They just uh, they not different with the uh, people who read, who involved in the social media. Journalism is uh, very different with social media. Social media is the media for people, but it is not journalism itself. It is just just uh, for chit and chat a forum around the globe. You can say that. But if the media who uh, who run with the journalism principles, they have to be uh, a professional in this field. In they understand the how to communicate the people. They know uh, what the uh, good principle for uh, educating people to protect the people who uh, who are lost their their land or something like that uh, they have to uh, to defend the people that is journalism actually uh, what other question uh, yeah uh, i saw pak hendri raise hand uh, pak hendri Henry Prastia. Pak Henry, Henry yeah. yeah, please to uh, ask to Pak Jauhar. Time is yours, Pak Henry. Okay, thank you, Pak Titian. Am I audible? Yes, please, Pak Henry. Yes, Pak okay. Henry. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Johari. Uh, Johar, without I. <laughs> okay, sorry. Thank you, Mr. Maybe my question sounds as a pessimistic view of the digital era. As we know, there is two technologies that responsibility for uh, to homicide, uh, transport technology and te communication technology, technology because yeah. they kill the time and kill the distance. Uh, and then, uh, in the digital era, in so many cases, transportation technology, they win the speed by the 
the safety behind. And in some case, in journalistic, in communication technology, they win the speed, but they leave the accuracy behind. Mm, they yeah. leave the trust behind. Yes. So there is a lot of journalists without journalism. And then digital journalism kill our trust too. What's your opinion about that? Thank you. Yeah. Okay. okay. Pak Ahmad Jauhar, so please. Uh, okay, Pak Henry, uh, that's good question as well. Uh, that's related to what I uh, present uh, previous uh, uh, time ago. That uh, a journalist, it is uh, can can be compromised with if the journalist cannot uh, qualified or cannot be professional because when a journalist not professional it will be dangerous for people actually when the, because he will he or she will deliver uh, the issue the the hoax the false co uh, information and the uh, uh, other things that not uh, pro uh, that improper for people like uh, I will uh, take uh, a, a, an, a, an example like this uh, when people are uh, just the just accepting the government's concept in um, making the new new capital uh, state capital yeah new new state capital that will indonesia will for 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 filipinos uh, friend uh, the government initiated the uh, plan that will move the capital uh, from jakarta to uh, somewhere in the middle of Kalimantan Island, right? Yeah. The, the name of the city will be Nusantara, the, the new capital. But you know, uh, to build this new capital, need a lot of money. But money from where? Uh, we actually we won't in depth, in depth, in depth anymore. Yeah, but it it it. It, if it is uh, forced to to be done, yeah, to make a new capital, who will uh, bear? Who will bear the the load? Siapa yang menanggung beban nantinya? Must be people. Even the people who not yet uh, born born to the world, yeah. And will get uh, the people will suffering in depth uh, many years to come. So if the journalists at or, or media don't understand this uh, issue, it will be dangerous for the ne the next generation. Even we will be trapped by the death. Yeah akan menjadi jebakan utang. If the uh, the people of media or journalists understand this, they will not support the movement of the capital to the Kalimantan. What what is worth it? No worth it. Yeah, no worth it. We have already set the capital Jakarta as good as this. Uh, in 70s yes manila is manila philip the in the philippines is a very very advanced city in asia the second rank city after tokyo but right now uh, probably jakarta is not not uh, so lack compared to tokyo or big cities in asia including Manila is within 
the last a few years also uh, uh, rise as a, a good city in Asia. Uh, but why why should Indonesia to be to build a new capital? No. This issue, this topic, must be emphasized by, by the media, by the good journalists. So the journalists have to also protect the people not suffering in the coming years yeah that that's uh, that's the role of uh, good journalism in in this is in this case i think uh, my answer can satisfy you pak henry probably yeah so how pak henry is it uh, satisfy you Henry, or, maybe, or, uh, or probably the the other question. Okay, so or we Maureen still have, yeah, still, yeah. yeah, still have some questions. Uh, good morning, okay. journalist. Sir, thank you, thank you. Okay. Oh, okay, thank you, Pak Henry. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so uh, we still have some questions, Pa no. uh, Ahmad. Yeah, for Maureen yeah. Balesteros. Yeah. Good morning. Journalist. Post yeah, journalists these days can work effectively. Oh, this can work effectively with the internet since we are into digital era. Yes. What if there's no internet or high end technologies? Can journalists be effective as before? Yes. Yeah, <laughs> that's that's a, a, a funny question. I, I think uh, before before the internet era. We are working uh, manually, fully manually. Yeah, uh, like I mentioned to you all, that when we make, uh, we have to uh, interviewing the uh, source personal, personnel. We have to make uh, appointments. Then we have to prepare everything. So we will not miss the word, any single word from him or her. But in this era, even we can interview interview the people only through this uh, uh, this machine, this uh, Zoom or Google Meet or something, and instantly we can uh, by sending him message. Uh, by uh, WhatsApp, we we can ask uh, make him, uh, sir, will you available to be interviewed right now? Uh, and he will answer instantly. So, I think communication will be uh, easier. Uh, I think, uh, Maureen, I think uh, it's the matter of uh, speed. Of speed and for the easiness yeah for the easiness for the communicating with uh, source personnel compared to uh, those days uh, but the principle how to uh, how a journalist gather the informations I think is un until the, in the future time I think it's not much different yeah, uh, a, journal, a good journalist must com uh, complete the stories with the data, with the, any figures, and uh, with the any information that related to the information he will deliver to the people. He will uh, the the stories he will desire to create in. Yeah, I think that's. Uh, satisfy you, satisfy you, Maureen. Okay. Okay. Thank you, yeah. Ahmad. And we yeah. have a question from Melissa. Assalamualaikum, sir. There are so many cases of journalism in this era, and for example, is about elite opinion in political issue or social issues. 
and it's break the rules or journalism ethics. Why many journalists do that for a profit? What an action or solution for that issue? <laughs> so please, Pak Ahmad. Yeah, yeah, yeah. What Melissa uh, asked is uh, uh, very, very uh, uh, very ha ha happening in this situation and circumstances. Uh, if the journalist break the rules, uh, ethics, so he will be he should be punished by the uh, by the law, uh, press law, uh, and the uh, the solution is to be uh, run in Dewan Pers. There is a Dewan Pers press council that has a duty to overcome this this problem. So when journalists run the stories uh, not based on the uh, fact or the in this situation, or they just uh, make uh, malpractice in the in their they they works, so people can uh, complain it to the Divan Pers press council. Because uh, that's the right of people to to correct the media, to correct the journalists. If not, the wrong or the, the mistake will be spread all over the community. And who will uh, take the, the disadvantage from this issue? The people itself. Yeah, people. People will be. Safer I will be suffering from uh, this misconduct. Yeah. So the journalist must correct the in, the information correctly as correct as possible, as soon as possible, because he has or she has uh, uh, practicing the bad journalism. I think. Yeah. Journalism must be ethic and. After the corrected by uh, by other people, and the media must uh, must be uh, publish the correction. That's the uh, that's the uh, the obligation obligation of the media to accepting this uh, correction from others yeah it it becomes uh, it becomes uh, no 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 jail punishment from the for for the journalist but only he asking for the apply apologize by the media in the uh, civilized community Making the mistake is a very, very bad, uh, very bad, uh, very bad, apa? very bad. Uh, people have to have avoid to make a mistake uh, in their in the, their stories to be delivered to the people. That is principle of the journalism so journalism not cannot uh, close their themselves by not accepting the correction from the people but have to accepting the correction from others that's uh, my answer for melissa yeah okay and the next is the question from ahnab good morning mr ahmad johar Today, digital communication technology has developed, so a new model of journalism has emerged, namely citizen journalism. So because of that, the world of journalism that exists today does not only belong to professional journalists, 
but belongs to anyone who wants to share their information. What do you think about this? So uh, Ahnaf is asking about the gen uh, generated uh, yeah. user generated content. Yeah. Okay, Ahnaf. In Indonesia, uh, citizen journalism uh, is not uh, not recognized as a professional journalism. It's kind of it's kind of uh, by side works, yeah, by side works from the people who are not a journalist. According to the press law, journalism uh, or to, to be journalist is a profession. It must be uh, they, the the person who want to be a, a real journalist have to uh, take uh, some courses. Uh, the, the professional and uh, has have or have to be passed past the the uji competency wartawan our uh, competence test for the journalists and uh, citizen journalism usually not uh join with the certain of uh institution uh, according to the law uh the professional uh press company is recognized and it will be uh it will be uh overwhelming or to be uh sorry it will uh, to be involved in the law system press law system so if the they make a mistake it will be uh solved in the one pass or press council it's not uh, because it, it is different with probably in the u.s who will guarantee the the story created by citizen journalism no no institution will guarantee its rightness but if the story is published by uh, news institution it will be uh, it will be uh, taken for responsibility to the uh, the uh, the news agency or news institution that's very different if uh, citizen journalism probably a little bit more than more advanced than uh, social media but they are not they still not yet considered as professional journalists that's why in this country uh, the citizen journalism still not uh, considered as a professional journalist it's really different that's my answer to Ahdaf. Yeah. Thank you, Pak Ahmad uh, Johar. So uh, we yeah. will go to the next question. Okay, so uh, Maureen's question already answered. And we go to Carmelia Adiulia. Assalamualaikum, Mr. and Mrs. I am Carmelia. I want to ask you a question about a position of journalism in a nation with a democracy system. What is a real purpose or position of journalism? Uh, Waalaikumsalam, uh, Carmelia. Yeah. Ah, uh, in the in a nation with the democracy democracy system, uh, the a uh, free press or free free journalism is a must. Yeah, because by having uh, the uh, press uh, press freedom the uh, the real press freedom so people can express express uh, their need their idea or their uh, their uh, their thinking to be published to be understand to be read to be read by other people that's the uh, 
characteristic of democratic system. Uh, in a democratic system, the people have the right to voice anything, to express anything, and he or she must understand what he will be expressing to the uh, community is to be responsible uh, by him or herself. That's the principle of democrat democracy. Uh, so uh, we have uh, experience in the uh, last period. Yeah, that is uh, the new order that uh, when our country is in the control of late president suharto it seems like uh, we have we have a democraticized countries country but actually it's not a real democratic country a democratic system because uh, president suharto at the time with its bureaucracy controlled the media the uh, the journalism system after after uh, reformation happened in uh, 1998 there are and then uh, followed by the publishment of the press law, law we are living in the democracy system that uh, actually happen uh, for for the real not uh, not seems like not ola ola yeah and uh, that's a very different so after 1998 especially when there with the, the presence of the press law people have to write to voice that unvoiced before yeah yeah People have to uh, free to speak, free to express their uh, their uh, their idea, their their thinking. I think that's the the point. Yeah, that's the point. Okay. Uh, it? One more, uh, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. This is yeah. from Fatima Azahra. Assalamualaikum, Mr. and Mrs. Good morning. I'm Fatima. I want to ask, we can see journalism today has a lot of pros and cons. Uh, we can to do give a real journalism to public. I, uh, maybe uh, Fatima means that uh, the real or the truth behind the journalism to the public. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it is uh, difficult to be answered. Yes. And it's uh, as difficult as the uh, journalism uh, problem itself yeah uh, yeah so this is uh, back to the uh, print press institute or the uh, press uh, me uh, media company uh, is the media has uh, idealism in uh, in uh, uh, protecting the the people people's right to free expression or not uh, so not much uh, media have uh, have uh, stands like this only a few media the the others are followers they just uh, want to make media sometimes they are not thinking uh, to making media have uh, have uh, consequent uh, a lot of consequence like how to how to make the journalists their journalists uh, pay their journalists properly how to how to uh, idealize the journalists with such as knowledge that they can be a professional journalist. That's difficult. A lot of media right now 
it's uh, often uh, breaking the rule or rule of the press law or rule of code of conduct. That's that's uh, that's also endangered our democracy democratic system. So that's why uh, it is not easy actually uh, to see uh, how to be a real journalism to the public. To be uh, a real journalism, a real journalist have uh, have many conditions to be fulfilled. Yeah, not not just I want to be a journalist and then uh, with with the uh, their ab limited ability to write or to uh, make stories they feel enough to be journalists no they have uh, journalists uh, the real journalists have to have a good insight have to ability to make a good writing have to ability uh, a proper manner and uh, as well as a good uh, deed to to do something for the sake of the uh, people interest that's journalism must be fulfilled yeah um, con condition to be journalist is must be fulfilled Rasanya itu Mbak Titin yang bisa saya sampaikan. Oke, okay, thank you so much Pak Ahmad Jauharso. Uh, is there any question from the chat box? Uh, this is the last question. Is there any question who want to ask to Pak Jauhar directly? No, uh, I guess uh, everyone feel satisfied with your explanation, Pak Jauhar. <laughs> Alhamdulillah. <laughs> yeah, so uh, because uh, there are so many questions and uh, mm. you answered them clearly. So, uh, oh, yes, uh, Pak Munir, Al Munir oh, Rahmat, raising his hand. Okay, Pak Munir. Pak Munir want to ask to Pak, Jau, Pak Ahmad Jauhar yeah. directly. Please, Please the Pak easy Munir. one question, Pak Munir. <laughs> yeah, one question, Pak. Pak Jauhar, thank you. Good morning, Magadang Umaga. And for uh, our friends from Philippines. Terima kasih, Bu Titin. I just uh, have one question for Pak Ahmad. Uh, speaking about the diversity of ownership, dealing with uh, the diversity of content. That's it. Because we all know that uh, there is in Indonesia, especially, uh, we, we have uh, so many media, not just uh, media print, and also media yeah. TV and everything. We all know in our experience, our, our past, there is a diversity of ownership dealing yeah. with the diversity of content, Pak Ahmad. Thank you. Yeah. Okay, Pak Almunir Rahmat. Uh, Good, good uh, closing uh, question. <laughs> I hope so. Uh, yeah, there are a lot of uh, conditions to be fulfilled uh, in uh, reshaping the uh, diversity of content. Yeah. First of all, uh, the the law, uh, the press law, demanded uh, that uh, there are no co concentration of the ownership of media. Uh, the ownership of the media must be spread it all over the community. Uh, so that's why uh, it is uh, in a certain. Uh, certain aspect the the flourish of the internet media in, internet based media is a good for our democracy our democratic system because a lot of people right now uh, are uh, trying to express their 
uh, the people's need to understand to in uh, on information but uh, with uh, with more and more media so make creates more more vision a more angle of uh, the the information not only uh, like not not like in the uh, the previous regime a previous uh, era uh, or the baru when all the stories all the news almost the same almost the same yeah uh, uh, the, that's in the language of bahasa Indonesia is seragam beritanya the stories uh, the, or the news is similar uh, it, uh, almost the same almost, okay. almost the same it is uh, not it is against the democratic system democratic system needs the uh, difference a uh, vision a uh, difference view of anything yeah also different ownership of the media because ownership of media will be uh, influence the media itself yeah. like for example like if media owned by one corporation like uh, Kompas or like Java Post, the stories is not too different so people cannot receive the the various uh, vision uh, the various uh, opinion on this issue on certain issue certain topics but if the media is uh, a, a very various media there are a lot of various opinion various vision that's uh, reflect the democratic itself yeah democratic situation so uh, whatever we have to uh, keep this uh, this diversity of content by enforcing the democracy itself in our country I hope my answer will be satisfy you Pak Munir Rahmat yeah, but uh, how about uh, the apa, code ethic journalistic here in Indonesia we have? Yeah. With the uh, diversity of ownership on, of content. There, there is. There say? is. Yeah. In, or not, not, not in the code of conduct, Pak pa, pa Rahmat. But even in this, this is stated in the press law. Press law. So, no, actually no concentration of ownership of media. Uh, but it, when it happened, uh, it it's still a lot of uh, a lot of people who owns media right now compared to the previous era. I think, yeah, it is uh, very very different. The the uh, the threat is if the media then uh, together they. Uh, they pu publish the, the same stories. That's very, very disappointed. Especially, especially before election. Before yeah, election, especially they use their, their media to use. Yeah, they want uh, the media orchestrated. Yes. But for the certain media, it is it will not be happen because this the uh, the proper media is ha has a principle in in what I mentioned before, Pak Rahman. Thank you, Pak. Ahmad. Yeah, sama-sama, Pak. Selamat. Uh, thank you, too. Okay. Thank you, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. Uh, uh, thank you, Pak Titin. Uh, yeah. uh, forgive me if I deliver <laughs> my uh, mistake or something regarding with it. Okay. No, it, no, it's great, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. So uh, the question from Pak Al Munir is the last question. So uh, we can conclude from this discussion that uh, technology is going uh, with the journalism. Journalism cannot left behind the technology. It has okay. to step together with the technology. Okay, thank you, Pak Ahmad Jauhar, for your presentation.
Thank you. Yeah. It is very great. Thank you. Uh, yeah, okay. and thank you for the attendance. Uh, our friends from Dimsu Philippines and from Ohamka Indonesia. Thank you. And yeah, all the participants, thank you. And now I will give uh, the time and the time to the MC. Give it back to you. Nabila, should please. We, Nabila. Should we take a photo together or not? Oh yeah, we will take after the, the <laughs> MC. So at the last... <laughs> The last time, Pak Ahmad Jauhar. Iya. Yeah. Oke, okay, Nabila. Please. Oh, alright, thank okay. you, Ibu Titin Satyawati okay. as a moderator now. Alright, ladies and gentlemen, we have a finish all our program and like say Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, Yorobil Alamin. Alhamdulillah, Yorobil Alamin. Alhamdulillah, Yorobil Alamin. Alright, uh, ladies Thanks, and God. gentlemen, thank you for nice attention. See you tomorrow. And... Last is salam. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bapak Ahmad Jauha, for your wonderful presentation. Thank you, Pak Munir. Thank you, all participants. See you tomorrow. And we have to be more active to share our ideas in this program. We are waiting for you tomorrow. All students from Uhamka and D Dimsu with another instructor and another speaker. Okay. Terima kasih Pak Ahmad Johan. Thank you Apa Ibu ya? Leli, terima Apa kasih. Munir. Terima kasih Bu Titi. Mau foto dulu enggak Ibu? Ya, foto-foto boleh. Foto sama Bu Leli dong. Ya, yeah. uh, please open yeah. your camera. Please and we will take the picture. Yes. Uh, yes. Who will take the picture? Uh, the administrator usually. Saya bantu, saya bantu, Bapak. Oh, good. Ulina, <laughs> Alfandi, mungkin. Bang Lai, Bang Lai, kameranya diaktifkan. Yang pertama, frame satu. agak lama sih kasih. Nah itu udah ada yang bantu tuh lebih cepat faster itu. Hmm. Yeah, already Pak Munir page nah, one. Page one. And now page two. Momento. Ada manual aja. Page two, get ready, keep smile. Here we Cheese. go now. Key. Okay, smile. Keys one and two, three. Okay, next page. Page three, Moment. maybe. Page three. Keep yeah. smile. Keep smile. Everybody. With one, two, and three. Okay. Last page, please. Get smile, everybody. One, two, and three. Selamat. Ya. Yeah. Terima kasih. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone. Ibu Maria, Pak Ken. Terima kasih. Sampai besok, Ibu Maria. Terima kasih. Terima kasih. Terima kasih semuanya. Terima kasih banyak. 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 Maria besok ya. At the same time. Terima kasih semuanya izin semuanya. Terima kasih boleh. Terima kasih Bu Deka. Mohon izin. Uh, untuk mahasiswa UHAMKA mungkin bisa stay dulu ya Nabila dan teman-teman ya. Bu Ika. Pak Johar. Ya. Ketenuan ya. Pak Johar. Oke, okay, terima kasih, Maturnuan Pak Johar. Sama-sama, terima kasih. Saya pamit undur okay, ya. Oke, okay, okay. okay. Bu Telis. Sehat selalu semuanya. Amin. Terima kasih untuk semua. Terima kasih.
Tenun Mas Bas. Ya, ya, saya dengerin sambil ini tadi. Baru <laughs> baru apa? Baru di Mbak ini datang. Terima kasih. Aduh. Aku di Baik. Farida. Dah. Iya. Gimana nih? Hmm. Wininda sudah keluar ya? Keluar kayaknya. Saya juga mau izin ini udah ditunggu mau ada perlu. Oh ya udah saya bikin link baru aja ya Bu ya. Oh, Oke. Ya, baik, terima kasih. Assalamualaikum. Salam.